Emilio, thank you for being here today. Thank it's, you. Uh, you look good. In Crescent Moon. It's uh, good to have you in Crescent Moon. <laughs> hey, you feel the history when you're in this room. You yes. feel it. You see it everywhere. It's a, it's it's, a lot of happy moments. You know, life oh, is about man. happy moments. It's a lot of... When you create music, you have so many emotions. That, you know, songs that you write and you don't know what, what to expect. And then you listen to them in the radio, on the club. And the, it's such a, a great feeling. And if somebody who's in the music business has one hit, one hit, it's something that they never forget the rest of their life. And how many, I mean, you've had dozens, hundreds. Your book is one of the most valuable books out there in terms of uh, the music that you and Gloria have written together. It's just phenomenal. So Emilio, uh, first of all, thank you for taking time to chat with me today. You're welcome. I, I'm having these conversations with people that I admire, uh, mostly people that come from the business world. Uh, people who are entrepreneurs, people who are trailblazers. Um, you know, there are people who have different ideas about how to build a business and how to be successful. So I want to hear some of that from you. Um, I'm also on a campaign to find ways to close the Latino wealth gap in America. I want to see Latinos thrive even more in this country. So any little tidbit of advice that you have for our listeners would be tremendous. So let's first tell us about Emilio Estefan, maybe a couple things that some people don't know about your upbringing, when you came to the country, you know, what made the Emilio Estefan that we know today? I think what it made me was to go to a childhood that was very rough. Hmm. Leaving Cuba as an immigrant, like a lot of immigrants that they have to leave their country because of political problems, especially the communists. Mm -hmm. and, uh, me, I was 11 years old when the police came looking for dollars in my house and they saw how they pushed my mom and my family, and I knew if I get to 14 years to 15, you get in a military age, you have to spend another 15 years in Cuba, serving the communist country. And that night I cried all night and I told my mom, I have to go. My mom said, you know, I have to stay with your grandfather because you know, he's old, he doesn't want to leave. Wow. So I always tell people in eight hours that I flew from Cuba to Madrid, I became a man. Wow. A man that a very wealthy family uh, and getting to Spain became almost homeless. Go wow. to a church and uh, try to get food. And then uh, Saturday and Sunday, I used to play the accordion. I saw a guy playing the accordion at nighttime. I used to go outside and I, and I told the guy, listen, don't, you don't have to pay me. Just uh, feed my dad and me for food. And, uh, and it was good because I played all the Cuban music and it was a lot of Cubans in, in, in Madrid. Oh, wow. And for lunch, I used to play and they, they tipped me and they gave me food. But I so learned, you had no family there? No family. Wow. And uh, I learned that it's only one way to go in life, hmm. to go from negative to positive. Don't come and complain. Try to make a better life. Try to prove yourself. It was hard. I can tell you it was really hard because, you know, I never learned English totally perfect. I never learned Spanish <laughs> <laughs> perfect. Even my grandson, my grandson told me the other day, when are you going to learn English? What are you talking about? I'm talking to you in English now. I think you speak English perfectly, Emilio. <laughs> but you know something? I think that I learned to enjoy life. It's not about money. It's not about being number one. It's not about uh, many Grammys. It's not about achieving the Medal of Freedom in the United States. You never was, thought about it in those terms. No. I think the Medal of Freedom for me wasn't about me and Gloria. It was generating a hope. The first it, husband and wife ever to be awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom. In the history. You and Gloria. And wow. you know something, when I was getting the Gary Dad, I felt, I said, I'm going to help so many kids. Hmm. And I helped, you know, minorities, not only Latinos, minorities. Hmm. That you, we live in a great country, and especially Latinos, they need role models. And, you know, in the long run, I try to do the best that I can to, uh, to leave a beautiful legacy to all the people and to inspire them. Nothing is easy in life, but when you do what you love, I always tell people, choose whatever you want to do. You want, you want to be a chef, be the chef, best mm. chef. You mm. want to be a music musician, be the best musician. I never have 
the money to learn uh, music. Everything that I've done is said, you know, by ear. Is I, that right? Yeah. You never had a music never. lesson. Unbelievable. I, I couldn't Un even afford to eat. I mean, <laughs> imagine I going to school. I mean, I used to go to, to I used to wake up at six o'clock in the morning, go and work in Bacardi, and then at four o'clock go to the school to eight o'clock. And eight o'clock, I used to dress in the car and go to an Italian restaurant and play the accordion for tips. Wow. And many nights I went home without uh, even eating because they, they didn't feed me. That's what I tell the, all my, in the restaurant that we own, I said, listen, all the employees, they have to eat. I don't want to see anybody to serve food that doesn't eat because that's a horrible feeling to uh -huh. have. Mm -hmm. But I learned many things. And uh, the secret is to enjoy life. Enjoy life. Do I always, love. Yeah. I always try to make the other person more important than me. I always feel that that's important to share time. You live people. to serve others. Absolutely. I've seen that firsthand with you. Absolutely. And, and, and Emilio, some people may know that you and I became business partners a few years ago. Uh, with the Latitude Venture and the Latitude event platform that we have together. I'm going to talk about that in a little bit, but I just want to, you know, close the loop on what you were talking about in terms of your immigrant experience. I think some of the adversity that people experience in their lifetime, especially early on, it either breaks them because it does break some people yeah. um, or it builds character in them. And for you, it was definitely the latter. It built character. It defined who you were. You made up your mind that you were going to make something of your life and you didn't know how necessarily um, you didn't have a formal education uh, but you knew that you had the will um, you had a sort of i don't know a servitude uh mindset about what you wanted to be and uh, i think you know that's who you've remained which i think is even more remarkable to be honest emilio is that you have that very humble beginning and you have achieved the kind of success that most people can't even dream about, but you are exactly the same person that you've always been. And I can say that from firsthand experience. I think that is the most remarkable thing about you and Gloria. Frankly. Why change? <laughs> it works. Why change? It isn't. Celia Cruz told me one many, many years ago, said, you can get a song number one, but you cannot buy love from the people and respect. Hmm. And we've been blessed. I mean, people are incredible, nice to us, and they always say thank you. With the, 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 and I said, you don't have to say thank you. I do it because I feel I'm proud to be Latino. I'm proud that, you know, to be able to, I think, do things that, that I work in the Olympics, work in the Super Bowl. So, uh, Perform uh, in the White House. Yeah, 46 events in the White House. I get a lot of Grammys. I think this was my 44 nomination for Grammys. And uh, it, But realism is not about that. It's about being happy. Uh, you know, some people... Never is enough. Hmm. To me, that's really true. It's true, especially really rich true. and famous, yeah. because I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, a witness of that. I mean, they have a car, they want another car, they want, you know. Sometimes, you know, simple life is better. Yeah. To me, one of the things that makes me the, the most happy is when I wake up in the morning, I get on a bike, and I, I talk to all the homeless. I know, I know all of them in Miami Beach, and I feed animals in the morning. I think, and, I, and I've seen you, you know, in meetings, and I've seen you reach in your pocket, and you still carry cash in your pocket, right? Yeah. You still have a little <laughs> wad of cash in there, and that's, you know, the way. I mean, you don't see that so much anymore. But uh, all right, so let, let's let's pivot a little bit. Um, all right, so you were uh, a gifted musician. Um, obviously, you and Gloria got together and made beautiful music together, and um, you know, you became a producer and you started producing others. But Emilio, it, you didn't stop there. I mean, you own hotels and you own restaurants and you own all sorts of other businesses. How did all this come about? It came out because, you know, I didn't want my kids to go to what I went through. Hmm. That insecurity to, you know, to be sure that they don't have to go because it, it's really hard to go through that. And I'm gonna tell you something. I didn't do that by myself. I had the best staff in the whole world. I am the kind of guy that likes to inspire people. My employees and my staff always, I say, is the best one that I have because they go most, more than above to make things happen in a better way. I had the same staff in my house almost 40 years. Wow. And, you know, I remember one time I was in the White House and President Obama said, what can I do for you? And absolutely nothing. Everything that I don't <laughs> hear in the White House is because I want to be sure I have the ears of the president to tell doesn't matter, I'm not a Republican, I'm not a Democrat, I don't believe in, in parties, I believe in the person. And uh, when they invite me to produce things, I do it because I feel it's important to do that. I say, will you give me a ticket to the Christmas party? I say, why do you want a ticket for the Christmas party? Oh, you told me to do anything. <laughs> so I brought my chef, the guy who cleaned my car, you know, the, the lady who does the things at the house. 
And you know what, what it was normal for probably for me to go to the White House, being a producer, they w walk into the White House and start crying. I start crying too because I, I, we take things for granted. Yes, absolutely. And you know something, is uh, dreams come true in this country. Mm. Dreams come true in this country. And I think that's where latitude, I mean, when you guys, you and Sol told me to be part of latitude, to me it was like a dream because I know every time you go to latitude and you leave latitude, yeah. you feel so positive. You feel this and these people do it. And these people is doing it and they're going to do it. I be able to do it. And we inspire mm -hmm. a lot of people. And like I say, it's a great feeling. You know, I feel it's a great feeling. I think you only live once. To me, my biggest reward was by a house my mom and my dad next to my house. I used to go for lunch with them. At 9 o'clock, doesn't matter, Madonna so was there. So buying a house was a big deal. Well, not only that. I mean, I used to have lunch with them. Uh, 9 o'clock. time with them. Madonna was here recording yeah. Evita because I done many, many movies. So, uh, or Shakira or Jennifer Lopez or Gloria. I used to go back home, put them to bed. And you know something? When they pass away, I, felt I got a great feeling about doing things. Hmm. Many of the past, you never recover that. And I think you need to think about other people, how you'll be able to make other people happy. It's a great feeling. Believe it or not, it's a great feeling to have. Mm -hmm. I mean, talking about the homeless, it's not about the money. You know what the homeless tell me? What they are impressed is that I stop to spend, spend time, time with them, with them wow. and listen to their stories. Sometimes, you know, I remember I give so them... So you don't just drop a dollar? No, I mean, so I give a, a piece of bread and the guy say... I, he ate half and they start giving half to the animals. I said, what are you going to eat tonight? He said, you know something, it makes me happy to feed some of the other, other uh, and make the animals happy and things like is that. Is that right? And you know something, you learn. Listen, for simple people, you le learn a lot of things because, uh, you know, like I say, I see a lot of rich people and famous people that they bring, the food is no good, I don't like this, and, you know. So I, here's I, a homeless I, guy uh, who has a little <laughs> bit of extra bread and he wants to share it with Absolutely. People, or with animals. I so. never, listen, I never send a... a in a restaurant, if I don't like something, I just leave it there. But I, I never send a, a, a food back. Like some people, they kept sending food back. No. <laughs> I know some people like that. <laughs> and, and lucky enough that I can get a plate and I can eat. You know what I mean? And that's that's a blessing. I think that's a definitely a blessing. So I just want to comment on something you said. You talked about President Obama and your relationship with the former president of the United States. And you've been friends with other presidents as well. And uh, But I also know for a fact that um, you know at the first Latitude event that you were at, um, you were in the green room and one of the executives from Wells Fargo was there and I introduced you to him and you gave him your card and you said, when you're in Miami, call me, we'll take you out. We'll take you out to dinner or whatnot. And I was amazed by that. He was more amazed by that. He ran to the, to the hallway and called his wife. I just saw him the other day in Washington, D.C. He now is the CEO of Freddie Mac, which is a big, big company. Good. Uh, which is great, which is great. <laughs> and uh, he brought up the fact that you had done that. Well, we should uh, call me now. He and I to said, call me have now. you called me? No. And he said, no. I said, call you him. <laughs> you have to give me his number. I call him. You remember me? <laughs> yeah, for sure. So, all right. So, you, I think the points that you made about your, your business is you were talking about your work ethic. And you don't want your kids and your grandkids to have to go through some of the same things you went through. Uh, so, and that was what drives you to keep working and keep creating and creep, keep forming new businesses. Um, and it seems to all happen organically and it happens based on relationships that you've also acquired over time. Yes. Because you, you, you may not do this intentionally, but you are an incredible manager of relationships. Um, you stay connected to people. I love people. Uh, you I reach really out love, to yeah, people. Absolutely. Uh, you called me and you said, what, what's your shoe size, Gary? <laughs> and I said, 12, why? And like two weeks later, I get a pair of shoes that you, it's great you love. To, it's great to make other person yeah, happy, so, absolutely. So that genuine nature that you have is is your secret sauce. I will tell you that, sir. So, um, so, all right. so that's really great. Uh, I think I got a, a pretty good understanding of how you basically built the businesses that you did. You talked a lot about the people that you've had work for you over time that are extraordinary. And I will tell you that you attract what you reflect. You get great people to work here because that's what you, that's what you project as a leader. And they respond to you and they are inspired by you. And I know the people that work here and they love being a part of your extended family, so to speak. So it is a really, really unique um, environment that you've created here. 
it is sort of an empire. You know, I don't want to, you know, sort of dwell too long on that. <laughs> but uh, this is an extremely successful man right here um, that has, you know, uh, an, an incredible amount of assets that he's acquired over time. And um, you've done it with just some basic fundamental um, disciplines that I think you've always stuck with. And it's, it's impressive. And I'm just, I'm, I'm honored to call you a friend. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, you know something, Gary, I'm very organized. I do a lot of research before, the, you know, my limitation of, of work. I, I want to be sure everything that I do, I try to do as safe. So how do you I do am. that? How do you manage your time so well? Well, number one, I do, I plan things because uh, if I'm going to spend time with a person, I want to be sure that I dedicate time for that person. I feel like I told you, the minute that passed by, you never recover the minute. I mean, we learned with COVID, and I learned that with a glorious accident, that your life can change mm. in one minute. Mm. We was on top of the world, and you know something, and we went to see President Bush in the White House, and then we went to a dinner on Sony, and we, we got in, in the bus for the concert, and uh, and we, we got into an accident, and Gloria broke her back. Yeah. And the, the doctor said, I don't think she'll be able to walk again. Mm -hmm. No more babies. And I said, you know something? It's, it's this feeling about it, that what happened to me as a kid, it can happen with something else. And I said, why this happen now? And, but you know something? I think that makes me and Gloria stronger. Even the marriage. We went to, together over 47 that years. That accident so. made you stronger well, as a person. I think when you love a person, your yeah, marriage abs absolutely. Stronger. I mean, you know something because did uh, you realize how quickly it could all be it taken can change? From you? And you know something, people need to learn that you can have all the money in the world, you can have anything. Health is something you cannot buy. Yeah. And uh, my feeling is that the minute that I I gonna be enjoying with the family and friend everything, I do it to the max. Hmm. I don't know if the next morning I'd be able to be back. And so so be people call that being present, yes. right? You don't use that language, but I know that's the language that people use referring to what you're just talking about. And I've been in meetings with you, and I'll tell you, I am a mess with my phone. I'm one of those people that always has one eye on the phone. <laughs> uh, it's, a, it's a problem I need to fix. I have never seen that with you. I have never been in a meeting with you where you weren't completely present in that meeting. And you've got a hundred things going on. Yeah, but if you check my phone, I don't have zero email, zero text because I answer every single one. I know that for a fact. <laughs> I send you a text message and like either I get a response in five minutes or you pick up the phone and call me yeah. and say, Gary, what are you asking me here? Uh, but that, uh, that's just about you. But, but you are present and that's, uh, uh, that is a gift. And, and, and I think it probably does account for your management of time. You know, you stay present where you are. You get done what you're there to do, and then you move on to the next thing. I mean, we went from a meeting right there, and the next thing you know, you're in your studio, and you're mixing uh, a, a new song for a friend that's a big star, and, uh, and now you're over here doing this interview, and you're present here. Um, it is quite phenomenal. I am on this campaign to find ways to close the Latino wealth gap in America. I want to see Latinos thrive. Our organization, NAREP, is all about home ownership and helping more Latinos become homeowners because we believe that's the first step to prosperity and wealth building. Um, and Latinos do it all sorts of different ways. You can be in corporate America, like Sol, and uh, like Oscar. Uh, you could be an entrepreneur, like yourself, or like real estate brokers that are part of our organization. Uh, you can be an investor. Um, tell us your thoughts. If you, if you were proclaimed the king or let's just say the ceo of the latino community in the united states right now what would you tell them that they all need to do today to live a more prosperous life well i want to tell you one of the the things that me and gloria all the way from the beginning we wanted to be sure not only our house was safe and pay mm. that my mom and my dad's house was safe and pay because i think that's give you security you got to have a place to live first. absolutely and you know something you feel secure when that happens Number two is a feeling about uh, the second generation. You're going to be surprised what is going to happen with the second generation of, of Hispanics in this country because you know something? Now we get. So you mean the, the, the generation that comes after immigrants? So, so yes. first, second generation, yes. Okay. Well, they're still going to be immigrants. Doesn't matter what happened. If you was born here, you're always going to be Italian, second generation. You're ah, going to be Jewish, yeah. second generation. Sure. 
But I feel the second generation and third generation of the Hispanics, they're still going to be immigrants, but you know, they're going to be more educated. They're going to have more time to prove the world who they are. They're going to have an immigrant spirit. Absolutely. But they're going to be more educated. They're going to be more assimilated of sorts. They're still going to be hungry. They okay. want to show the world. They want to show the kid how proud they have to be about their heritage. And that's one thing. They never can lose that. On the same time, I think you see more Oscar movies getting nominated by Latinos. You get a lot more music nominated. Please, yeah. please. But you know, it's happening. It's happening because you know something. The I first saw a little time, bit of momentum this year. Yeah? yeah. But I'm going to tell you something. When I, I remember when I did Conga. I don't remember much about the Oscars except for Will Smith. But yeah. beyond that, it was... <laughs> I produce. I know him. he's a friend of yours. I know. <laughs> I produce him. I did uh, Welcome to Miami here. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I, I, mean, um, I, I mean, he got a bad moment. I hope that, you know, he recovered from this. And he's a good guy. I know him. He's a good guy. He's something, always seemed something, like a guy. Something could have happened. I don't know what happened, but, you know, he's a good guy. People deserve a second chance. I 100%. think apologizing would be great. And he did. And I hope they get together back to, 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 the, to the whole joke and work it out. Yeah, yeah. I, I hate to have bad feelings in your in your, mm -hmm. your in the, your heart. What is going to happen more and more, and that's what I'm looking for. They're going to be hiring people, no big sort of you Latino, because we're qualified. Mm. And what happened? We're still going to be immigrants. We're still going to be. And the surprise at the end of the thing, they're going to say, "My God, Rodriguez was fantastic. He was a great baseball player." It's not because he was born in Puerto Rico. He was born in Cuba, in Dominican Republic, in Mexico. It's because he was a good play, baseball player. We have great directors, great musicians. I mean, they, the, the Latino musicians, they have, you know, something, they're hungry. They let, want... let me interject something, though. I mean, because it does beg a question. So, uh, discrimination. Have you ever felt discrimination? Many times. Okay, you have. So, you, it's a real you, thing. Yeah, the, 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 the seventh time I went to, uh, to Sony with Conga, they ne never let me go to... Seventh time. Seventh time. Only money to go in and out, to come back to Miami at night. Finally, the time that I let me come upstairs to listen to a guy, the, he listened to the music, and when he started the groove, he said, this is sound good, but when he, he heard English, he said, that would never work. Hmm. That would never work. You have to take the uh, tumbao out, you have to take the, the horns, you have to take percussion. I mean, this, the, the radio station would never play that. And, and, ah, they wanted but, to put you in a stereotype, basically. But he made a mistake. He told you how to change your last name. I stand up and I say, listen, you like it or not, I'm not changing anything. I will not change my last change name. Change your last name. And I, I did afraid that it's in the play on your feet. I say, but this is what America is going to look like, which became... I a, saw the musical, yeah. by the way, on Broadway. <laughs> I did. And it's becoming a, a, a phrase that a lot of people uh, they react to that because they, they, it's a feeling. Yes. To, to make a story short, uh, they say, uh, he told me, I said, thank you very much. Seven years later, I was pressing on Sony. Tommy Matola pointed me. Wait okay. a minute. Yeah. You just said that you went, presented seven times to Sony. They turned you down every time. Yeah. They tried to get you to change your name. Maybe they considered it at that point. Seven years from that point, you were the president of Sony Music? Sony, I mean, Gloria became really famous. And Tommy Matola said, you know something? I think you have something. We can, you have something that I think we can be able to, a new sound. And then it's when I work with Ricky Martin. I work with, with Jennifer Lopez, Mark Anthony, and Shakira. Shakira, Shakira grew up here. I mean, I managed Shakira for years. But you years had, uh, I'm, I don't mean to keep interrupting you, but you had this kind of <laughs> ownership mentality. I mean, you know, performers, they come, they perform, they work for somebody else, and then when their moment ends, it ends. That wasn't your approach. You were, you. I mean, you, you produced your music. You owned your music. You made sure that... You got paid properly. Am I wrong? I mean, uh, yeah, I wh was where organized. did you learn that mindset? Well, you know something? Because we are better educated. That probably the old-time musicians that didn't care. I mean, but one thing that me and Did Gloria, somebody mentor you? Did somebody give you no, tips? No, no. Well, I, I mentor me, I would say my mentor was Quincy Jones. Ah. Doesn't get better than that. I mean, okay. he's, he's, a, he's <laughs> family. Helps. Listen, he's family. He's yeah. a Emily's godfather. But, you know, something quiz me, uh, Quincy told me a lot of great things that, you know, that, I mean, for example, in order to, uh, when you create a song, it's great that you can own it if you can administrate it well. Hmm. And me and Gloria, we took time to be sure. But, you know, one of the things that we did, and uh, me and Gloria, is uh, if God gives us the opportunity to put me in that position is to help other people. Hmm. Ricky was from Puerto Rico, like Jennifer. But Shakira was from Colombia. Latinos try to 
always when they are in a position, bring people. I work with Alejandro Fernandez, with Van der Recodo. I work with Ana Gabriel. That's been your experience. Yeah. I mean, Talia, all the way mm. to when she was a yeah. little girl. No. I mean, uh, Paulina. Shakira. Uh, uh, you name it. But right. you know something? To me, I never see a person where they come from. To me, we're all the same. I never see a color. Like John Secara said, you know, they asked him, I said, you feel, you know, discriminated because, I mean, he was African-American, he was Latino. I said, I work with a guy that never saw a color. It's all about human being. And that's what we need to yeah. send a message to yeah. the world yeah. about, you know, equal, equal opportunity, equal uh, I, I human asked beings. the question about discrimination because it's, it's good to clear ask that. that you, whatever you experienced, you were able to persevere. You went over the wall, you went around the wall, you went through the wall, whatever it took to be successful. But I'm gonna tell you why, because the best way to you know, prove discrimination is to do things right. And tell Success. the person you know, that you can do it and do it better, and you can do it with pride, and you that's can bring it. That's the best revenge Absolutely. of all, right? Absolutely. Yeah, that's, that's, that's incredible. Let, let's talk about latitude for a second, right? So, so Sol Trujillo, our mutual friend, um, and I got together like 2016, 2017, and we started to contemplate um, creating a really, really significant event platform. I was inspired by South by Southwest. I know you've been there. It's an incredible event. Yeah. Sol, being the CEO of a Fortune 500 company, uh, three times over, you know, he thought in terms of the World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland, uh, the Aspen Ideas Festivals. Those are things that he's been a part of. We combine those ideas to create latitude. My idea about it was. Let's create a platform where Latinos can, you know, integrate, not integrate, can actually interface with other professionals, uh, find mentors, find capital, uh, partner with, uh, you know, other companies that they want to partner with. Just creating this really great platform where people can make connections. That was my thought. Plus, have a great time and be entertained and all of the above. Um, Sol is you know, a thought leader, right? We've got to change the narrative about the Latino community. We've got to put a correct narrative. We've got to put data out there. We've got to teach the world the truth about Latinos. That's Sol, right? Together, we somehow created Latitude. One of our first orders of business was we need to recognize people who have been trailblazers in our community and who have given back and set an example about giving back. We honored you at the very first one that we had. Uh, because you represent all those things. You came to that event and you said, wait a minute, this is something that I would really like to be a part of. You know, and of course, Saul and I were thinking the same thing. How do we get Emilio to, <laughs> to want to be a part of this? Um, you have a million things going on, Emilio. You got, a, uh, I don't know how many business that you, businesses you own. Uh, Gloria is one of the busiest people in the world. Why Latitude? Why did you decide that you wanted to be part of the Latitude event? Why no? I mean, you know something, when you see Seoul, the Seoul needed to do and create like you, Latitude, you didn't know to do that. You're doing this hmm. because you really want to make a change and show the world, the you know, everything that Seoul and you are, has been doing is trying to promote the right image for our family. That's when true. I say our family, it's a song that I wrote, it says one color, one flag, one color. That's the way I feel about Latinos. I mean, Absolutely. you know something? When you go to Latitude, people come from all over the world. They come from every city in the United yes. States. They come from different countries. And you know something? It's so beautiful to see their Cuban, smile. Cuban, Puerto Ricans, Mexicans. Oh, they've gone down the list, It's right? unbelievable. And you know something? I, I, I think in a way, you don't know how important for me it's because, you know, I feel right at home when I see people. And, I, and especially, you know, a lot of the topics that we do, I see a lot of young people, and I love that, love that. I mean, mm -hmm. being recognized for some older generation is beautiful, but to see young people asking you questions about how you did the record, yes. how you financed the whole thing. You know, we'll be able to do, in the days that we spend with Latitude, so many great things for people, because that's what we're getting, more people and more people, and now we're creating more, we're gonna create concerts, we're gonna create that people can go, not only enjoy the business side, enjoy our culture. When are you going to go to an event where you're going to see the most powerful CEOs in the world yeah. have a conversation about the Latino marketplace and then at night go see a concert with some of the biggest names in music um, and at the same time network and meet people uh, like yourself from all over the United States? Um, I think Latitude is the only place where you can do that right and now. And do business. Listen, a lot and of do people business. do connections there. But you know something, when I see Soul working on you so hard to make people proud 
I have to be proud about you guys because realistic, you know, something being part of the family of Latitude to me has been one of the, best, the biggest things that me and Gloria both, uh, because being recognized for our people, I mean, we got so many awards. I mean, we got the, the Medal of Freedom. Uh, we have uh, you we're know, in this building, Liberty. I mean, there, there, you can't I mean, walk two feet without I seeing I mean, it. it's so many things. <laughs> but, you know, this is hard people giving an award yeah. about, you know, everything we accomplished. Being recognized for your mom and your dad is so beautiful because, you know, something, I mean, they wish you the best. But, you know, when you have a kid, you don't know what is going to happen. Yeah. You don't know what is going to happen. I mean, Gloria's mom, she always wanted to protect Gloria. She said, are you sure you want to be in the music business? Are you sure, you know, alcohol? Like, what, how are you going to keep the house? And I said, mom, don't worry about it. We want to do it well. And you know something? She was so proud. I mean, at, at the end of her life, she wrote me so, very, so many beautiful letters mm -hmm. about how proud she was. And, you know, uh, I mean, to me, I mean, to me, I mean, to me, I don't like to do predictions. I don't like to promise a lot of things, but I think, you know, it's great to be able to accomplish some of the dreams that I never saw that, you know, we can have a star in the, the Walk of Fame in Hollywood, in Las <laughs> Vegas, in Miami, in so many places and so many awards. And when I walk in the morning in my house, I go and I have my Cuban coffee. I look around and say, my God, we're blessed. We're blessed to live in a free country. We're blessed that we be able to accomplish a lot of the dreams. We're blessed to give back. I mean, to a lot of charity work because I think, you know, some things are beautiful things to Incredible. give back to a lot of need. Uh, there is a lot of need in the world. And, uh, and by the way, sometimes it's not even money. It's about sharing time with the people in need. I think we learned that with COVID. That's a great lesson and, you know, something that I think most people don't think about, but it's absolutely true. It's not just giving money. It's also giving of yourself. And, and you know, I time. always look forward to go to Latitude because, you know, I get, even myself, I get inspired. When I leave, you know, the San Diego, and it feels so good that you know that uh, just to see the happy faces of me, see how people want to open new business. They're looking for uh, information. Mm -hmm. They're looking for things that we find. In one place, you'll be able to find so many things that almost is impossible. But more than anything else, I think what we live is pride. Pride, I bring, we bring unity, which is great. I think that it will bring people together, and that's a great message to have. And, and I'm just going to end with that thought, Emilio. Um, you mentioned the fact that you don't see yourself necessarily as Cuban per se, you see yourself as Latino. You see all Latinos as being part of the same culture, part of the same community. Um, not everybody sees it that way. Why do you see it that way? Well, I, I have to be Cuban. The way I talk is totally Cuban, but you know something I'm proud about the Cuban. I know community. you're proud about Cuban. That's not what I meant. But, but no, but what I, mean. I said to you, I mean, to have and, you know, do the crossover. I tell people, listen, the crossover in Latinos is about from being Latino to American. Hmm. We still have uh, to do crossover about because we eat different food. <laughs> we do. We have different holidays. I feel I belong to Latinos. A bigger I culture. I feel like, you know, when I go to every country, when I go to Brazil, Argentina, Spain, Mexico, it's incredible. I've been so fortunate to, you know, even to have Medal of Freedom from these countries. I mean, which it's really hard to get. Yeah. Like when yeah, I go to really my office, I get all this Medal of Freedom from, you know, from Panama, from Colombia, from the Dominican wow. Republic, from Puerto Rico. It's a beautiful thing because uh. I feel unity. Is when we have the power that we need. That's our strength. Absolutely, unity is strength. a power. And it's you a... see it in the flesh at latitude. And you know you something? See them... Absolutely, unity is when they have to respect them more about you know the, the power of spending, and more than anything else on the politics. Mm -hmm. They know the Latino boy is going to become more stronger and stronger, and we're going to prove the world that we hope to get more Latinos involved that represent the Latino community, represent the United States too, because Absolutely. we live in the best country in the whole world, and we're blessed to live in America. Yes, we are. It is uh, an incredible blessing. And you, my friend, are an incredible blessing to all of us, a great inspiration. Uh, we're all a little bit better off because of the leadership that you've put out there for us to, to follow in some way. I'm getting all red now. Gary. Oh, come on. It's, it's, <laughs> it's true. Uh, one last piece of advice for anybody listening about business or anything else that you want to talk about. Believe in yourself. Just believe Don't let yourself. anybody tell you it's not going to work. When they tell you that, be stronger. Be proud where you come from. Show the world that, you know, doesn't matter where you come from. Even minorities, I mean, Latinos, of course, they belong close to our heart. But you know something? Don't let anybody tell you this is not going to work. Hmm. Prove them wrong, and you know you're going to be you're going to feel believe, better. Believe, believe, believe. absolutely. Yes. And go to Latitude because in Latitude we can show the world, you know, how proud we are. 
Absolutely. I, I had to end this with a little kiss to you because I love you too much. <laughs> oh, thank you, my brother. Love thank you, you so much. Thank you. Thank you.